A few months ago, Nvidia released yet another GPU into its very crowded lineup of Pascal cards. And yet again, they added even more confusion to their naming scheme. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a GTX 1050 3GB superclocked card from EVGA, find out what's new about it, and whether or not you should buy one. Warning, contents under pressure. Do not point at face or eyes. I doubt these things are actually dangerous. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. By the end of 2017, NVIDIA had launched 13 different Pascal series graphics cards for desktops. And back in May, they introduced number 14, which I finally got my hands on here. Meet the GTX 1050 3GB model. This is the superclocked gaming edition from EVGA and features the same single fan cooling design as seen on the 1050 and 1050 Ti superclock cards. This card is a GTX 1050, but confusingly enough, it has more in common with the GTX 1050 Ti than it does its own namesake. So let's just break down the specs really quick. A GTX 1050 has two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, 640 CUDA cores on its GP107301 processor, and a base clock of 1354 megahertz with a boost of 1455. A GTX 1050 Ti has double the memory at four gigabytes and an increase in CUDA cores up to 768 running on the GP107400 chip with slightly lower clocks at 1290 megahertz and 1392 respectively. Both cards have a 128-bit memory bus along with one megabyte of L2 cache. MSRP on the GTX 1050 was set at $109 and 139 for the 1050 Ti. Although if we're being honest, the prices still haven't returned to that level since the crypto boom. I am seeing prices today that are about $30 to $40 higher on both Amazon and Newegg for those cards. Meanwhile, at the time of writing, the GTX 1053 gig was sitting at just 139 on Amazon and was actually $10 cheaper than any other GTX 1052 gigabyte that I found. So what makes the 1053 gigabyte model different than its brethren? Well, it has the same 75 watt TDP as the other two cards, but shares the GP107 400 chip and 768 CUDA cores with the 1050 Ti. The 1053 gig also boasts the fastest clock speeds of the bunch at 1392 and 1518 megahertz under GPU boost. Although all three of these cards ran well into the high 1800 megahertz range out of the box. The curious thing about this card is actually what it's missing. While the card does have GDDR5 memory, which was a relief to me, unlike that abomination of a 1030 that runs on DDR4, it is only connected on a 96-bit memory bus, versus the 1050 and the TI models, which are both running on a 128-bit bus. Also taken down a peg is the L2 cache, having just 768 kibibytes versus the full one mibibyte on the other two cards. So what that means is GPU processing power went up, but any cache or memory bandwidth intensive tasks may actually perform worse on this card. And yes, that's kibibyte and mibibyte, not kilobyte and megabyte. Those are two completely different terms. Well, they're the same term, they're just counted differently. But is any of that actually going to matter in games? Or is this just going to be a great value GTX 1050 Ti with one gigabyte less of memory? Well, let's take a look at the benchmarks.
There are definitely some interesting numbers here. While the CUDA core count was equal on both the 1053 gig and the 1050 Ti, we see the 1053 gig falling somewhere between the other cards in 3 d Mark Time Spy. And in fact, the 1052 gig gave a warning about not being able to run Time Spy because it doesn't have enough video memory. In superposition, it seems memory bandwidth may have been a factor here, as the 1053 gig winds up actually in third place behind the 1052 gig. And while both of these cards ran superposition, both the 3 gig and 2 gig models gave warnings that they don't have enough video memory to support superposition at 1080p high. Gaming wise, I tested six very different titles to see if I could suss out some real world disparity in performance between the three cards. And one thing you're gonna notice is despite having the same number of CUDA cores and actually higher clock speeds than the 1050 Ti, the 1053 gig landed in second place in every single test. Starting with Fallout 4, as it continues to be one of the top single player games on Steam, even though it's a V-Sync title and really doesn't benchmark all that well, I wanted to see if someone were to go out and buy one of these cards, would they have a good experience in Fallout 4? And the answer is absolutely yes. At 1080p Ultra settings, we see all of these cards have no problem locking the FPS at 60. Now, in my testing, even though I test the same scene over and over, the lows do tend to fluctuate a bit in that test, and they really should be ignored here. All three of these cards were a phenomenal experience in this game. Doom nets us the results I was expecting from every test here, and that being the 1053 gig just a few percentage points back of the 1050 Ti, with the 1052 gig falling well behind the other two. You will notice that, again, clocks and CUDA core counts aren't the only equation here, with the 0.1% lows of the 3 gig model falling well behind the 1050 Ti here. GTA 5 showed actually some surprising numbers with the 1053 gig scoring almost exactly equal with the 1052 gig. Now, the 0.1% lows on the 2 gig model are much lower here due to it, again, technically not having enough video memory for the settings that I was running, falling a few hundred megabytes short. One thing I always recommend when people buy video cards is if you're looking at a card with two different memory capacities, opt for the larger one so long as you can afford it. While it may not make a huge difference in price or performance, it may mean the difference between being able to play a game or not and will ultimately help extend the life of your card. Rocket League and Far Cry 5 both show stair-stepping like results from one card to the next, with the 3 gigabyte falling almost exactly in between the other two 1050 models. And in the biggest disparity of the day, Wreckfest sees our 1050 Ti beat the 3 gigabyte model by 48%. Now, the 3 gigabyte still is in second place, but the gap is much wider than in any of our other tests today. So where do we sit with all this? While the 1053 gig does fit pretty squarely between the 1050 and 1050 Ti models, I have to question why this chip exists at all. Not that it's a bad card, it's just further crowding the already pretty packed $100 to $200 GPU market. In that really narrow $100 to $200 price point, today on Newegg, you've got the AMD RX 550, RX 560, RX 570 in both 4GB and 8GB models, along with offerings from NVIDIA with the GT 1030 DDR4, don't buy that card, the GT 1030 GDDR5, GTX 1052 gig, GTX 1053 gig, and GTX 1050 Ti 4GB, all sitting in that narrow price bracket. It's no wonder there's a bit of confusion as to what's actually going on right now and what you should actually buy. Regardless of my personal feelings on why Nvidia made this chip, we're presented with the question of should you buy the EVGA GTX 1053 GB superclocked model? And I would say at the $139 price point it's at today, it's a pretty solid option, especially considering the RX 570 and GTX 1050 Ti, both are starting around the $170 to $180 mark in today's market. However, I wouldn't pay a penny more than $139 for this card, as the performance jump you see just by spending a couple dollars more is pretty extreme. And yes, the GTX 1053 gig is better than the GTX 1052 gig, and slightly worse than the 1050 Ti. Just don't spend too much on it. Make sure to like this video and let me know down in the comments, what do you think of the GTX 1053 gig? Is the market just too crowded or do you like the multitude of options? Genuinely curious to know. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing and be sure to catch Talking Heads, my once weekly live show every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific for the latest in beer and tech news. And if you're interested in any of the products that I've recommended here on Craft Computing, be sure to check out my Amazon store down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys. That would really hurt if it hit you in the face.